Hi everyone, my name is Sari. Welcome back to my channel. This is day 17 of the Simplify Your Life Challenge for 2022. This challenge is based on an ebook by YouTuber Michelle B. And I will link to her channel in the ebook in the information down below. There's also a playlist where you can follow along with this challenge. I will link that on the screen. So with that, let's get into day 17 where we declutter our computers. Today we are slowly shifting from decluttering physical spaces into decluttering our mental and emotional space by looking at digital files, which kind of live on that border of physical space and non-physical space because they do take up room in your life and on your hard drives. But it's easy to forget about them because they're not in sight. They're just stored on a hard drive. And if you're anything like me, you don't think about that until your hard drive's out of space. So in the ebook, this was a kind of one day thing, declutter your digital space. I have a lot more files than one week worth of challenge can handle. So I'm splitting this up into three distinct parts. I suppose technically it was two days in the ebook because it was your computer and your phone together and then your social media space together. So I have split up my computer into one day, my phone and cloud storage into another day, and then what I will call social space, which is social media, but is also going to include things like my emails. Yes, emails I have four. This is my problem see my problem now. My digital space tends to be both way easier to clutter up and it drives kind of a lot of the mental clutter in my life because if my computer and my phone and my hard drives and my storage space and all of that are a disorganized mess, which they are 100% of the time, then I can't find anything and it holds me back on making progress towards many of my goals. Tasks that require me to access that digital space. It's hard to do when you need a file and you can't find anything because everything's a mess. Mostly for me, it's photos. They are everywhere and they are just dumped into backup folders within other backup folders, within other backups on a hard drive. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't know if I'm the only one with this problem, but it's a big problem for me. My phone is just photos, sometimes video. And then the storage space gets full and I'm like, oh, I don't have any more room on my phone. Dump everything into a backup folder on my laptop that's called from phone, insert date here. And then I just get a whole series of from phone, insert date here, or folders labeled to sort. I also have a hard drive that has a laptop backup, which probably had a different laptop backup backed up onto the laptop and then also backed up onto the hard drive. So I also have in some cases like five copies of the same photo and sometimes it has the same name and sometimes I tried to be helpful and rename it when I made a half-hearted attempt to sort it. It's a whole mess. It's a series of whole messes. That is why I am splitting this up and we are taking this a lot more slowly than I think most people need to take it. It's just a me problem. Maybe not. Tell me it's not just a me problem. Digital items might not seem like they're clutter, but they are still items that cost us peace of mind and intrude on our happiness. And they can also cost us money. So think about the costs associated with buying hard drives or disk space or cloud storage or backups to store all of these disorganized cluttered up files and five copies of the same photo. Some stats from the ebook, the average American spends around 55 minutes a day looking for things they can't find. That is both physical and digital. And I think we've probably all had those moments of needing to send a document to someone or a photo or something. 
and you know you have the file, but you have no idea where it is. It's buried somewhere because it's in downloads or my documents, which just has a list of files that may or may not have helpful file names. Or again, helpfully, photos, which is in one of those from phone, insert date here folders, which are also not sorted. They're just the standard file names that come with your phone. Yep, we've all done it. Tell me we've all done it. It can't just be me. Instead of lost hours of our lives trying to find data or info or files, it's time for us to recreate our digital spaces to feel cleaned and clear and organized and save ourselves money and stress and time. This week, we're going to focus solely on computer files, which for me includes multiple laptops and an external hard drive and flash drives. And I'll probably try to get started on my cloud storage space. If you have the bandwidth and the time to do cloud storage here, I recommend it because that is sort of technically a computer file. I don't know where cloud storage fits, so I recommend you put it wherever it makes sense for you, if it makes sense for you to put it with your computer, because I know I use OneDrive, which I can access the files on from my file explorer in my laptop. Those files actually take up storage space on my system. So those I treat as computer files, but then there are things like Google Drive, which doesn't sync with my file explorer and I access solely online and things like Google Photos, which I'm probably going to include with my phone because it's mostly phone backups. So is OneDrive at this point. <laughs> I don't know how I ended up with auto backup your photos to OneDrive, but I did. And it's good because then I don't have to worry about losing photos if something gets deleted from my phone but also it's just yet another redundant backup of phone photos. However, there are some photos that I know only exist on OneDrive for whatever reason. So that's also a nightmare. And I'll probably end up doing the OneDrive photos with my phone because they are mostly photos that at one point came from my phone. Point is do this however you want. But for me, I'm primarily looking at files that exist on my computers and my hard drive. There are really guiding questions here, so much as guidance, but I encourage you to apply the same guiding questions to your documents as you would to your paper sorting. And the same question to your digital photos that you did to your regular photos and sentimental items. You can just build off of what we've done so far and bring those questions back in here, because even though these aren't physical items, they serve the same purpose in a lot of respects. We start by organizing our files into folders. The ebook says to start by deleting everything in your downloads folder. But I have a terrible, terrible habit of downloading everything into the downloads folder because I was too lazy to check that box that says, ask me where I want to download this file. And then I leave it there instead of filing it where it goes. So if I delete my whole downloads folder, I'm actually going to lose a lot of stuff I need. I want to get the structures in place so that I can then at the end go back in and file what I need from the downloads folder into that new folder structure. My computer is a Windows computer and it helpfully likes to store everything in my documents, whether they are actually documents or not. For example, the software that I'm using to convert my DVD media to digital files for Plex created its working directory in my documents, even though it is storing program data and video files. Uh, I tried moving it, and then the next time I used the program, it just reestablished itself in the documents folder, so that's where it's staying. My documents in Windows is really working directory. I guess, because many other programs do this. The place where I download my audiobooks, set up folders in my documents, and the documents folder is accessible by quick link from the menu. Whereas if I put it in users slash my name slash logical actual place for it, then I have to go through a series of menu 
options to get there where the documents, I can just click my documents and get there. So we are working within my documents and then the subfolders. So it will be a my documents slash documents which actually will be documents. My documents slash software, my documents slash projects, my documents slash media. That's how we're gonna do it because that is how Windows decides it's doing things. That way I can still find things, but also I don't have to click down seven sub menus to find what I'm looking for. So we end up with a new folder structure that is my documents slash books. Underneath books, it's split into audiobooks and ebooks. Under that is personal documents, and that is exactly what it says, personal documents. And then we get programs, which are zip files or other folders associated with certain programs that aren't specific program files. This is just where like I said, my DVD software, it has established itself a folder. Some of the other programs I run just have a folder in my documents. And so that goes here. The next thing we have is projects, which is stuff I'm working on. So these YouTube things go in here, writing things go in here, knitting or yarn dyeing or that stuff has a folder in here. Fandom stuff has a folder in here. Backing up, Windows also has folders specifically dedicated to music, pictures, and videos. And music, pictures, and videos are exactly what they say on the tin. Videos are not my YouTube videos. Those are like video files I downloaded or whatever. I don't have very many of them. It's not like I'm downloading videos from the internet all the time, but I have some assorted video files that I need. There's a blurred line between photos and videos in a lot of what I'm keeping because the photos folder has subfolders for certain things I like, and then there are photos and videos in there. And I'm not really sure that I want to split out the videos from the photos because then I have to look in two different places. I'm going to keep an eye on that and see how it goes. So organizing the documents folder was easy. It has a bunch of things in it that aren't documents, that's fine, but straightforward and logical. The next thing that I need to work on is the photos folder, which will take me several lifetimes. These are split, again, there's some files on my old laptop, there are some files on the external hard drive, a bunch of which are straight backup of exactly what's on my old laptop, but not all of that. And then there's the stuff on my new laptop, and then there's the stuff in OneDrive, and Google Photos, which is not getting dealt with this week. I'm just gonna flat out say it. It will get dealt with, just not this week. So there's really nothing for it other than going through all of these folders, hopefully called to sort underscore date or from phone underscore date, and just going back through decades of photos. I got a digital camera for the first time in 2004. So we pretty much have photos since then. Most of them aren't organized. I started several times now to put photos in folders, but it's such a long, arduous process that I give up after a few hours. So there's a start of a folder structure within that, but not really a folder structure within that. I don't really want to do this, but I will because we are decluttering and it is time that I at least knew where to look. This isn't going to be perfect and there are certainly going to be duplicate photos and I can tell you right now that there are some photos that I'm like, do these fit under my travel category or my nature category because it's nature I saw on travel. This is still going to be a little bit of a mess, but we're just, doing something here. Just broad level organization here and categorization and deleting whatever I know for sure that I don't need and don't want. Before doing this, I have made sure that all of my files in all of their disorganized glory are backed up on a data recovery service. I use Backblaze and I pay them a bit extra for lifetime backups so that, because otherwise you have to have that hard drive plugged in every 30 days and 
what if I realized six months from now that a photo is missing. So if I regret deleting any file at any point, I do have the option to recover it. I have a code that will get both you and me one free month of their service if you choose to use it. I'm not sponsored. That's just something they have as an offer for anybody who signs up for Backblaze. I do recommend this because it is super easy to use. And I literally just had to recover every single video file on the two terabyte hard drive that holds all of my YouTube videos because I dropped the hard drive and it just stopped working. And ordinarily, that would have been super stressful because I had videos on there that I hadn't edited yet and were the next things that were supposed to go up. But because I had Backblaze, I just clicked the relevant folders, asked it to send me a zip file, bought a new hard drive, which you know, sucked because I didn't really want to spend that money, but you do what you do. And then in like two hours, I had everything restored. And it was the only hardship was, ugh, now I have to spend this money on a new hard drive. I really believe in that service. It really, truly saved me at that point. So highly recommended. Code down below to get a free month if you want it. I'm not going to actually show you the photos backups because your folder structure and my folder structure will not look the same because your photos are different than mine. And I don't really want to show you photos. It's the same as the sentimental items. I'll just give you a little recap of what we did and how it went. As predicted, organizing those pictures took forever. This was something I've been working on actually in bits and pieces for weeks now in anticipation of this. And it still took me several hours across th at least three days to finish it up. And I didn't even manage to look at the cloud storage. I'm truly amazed that I didn't just lose all of my patience with this and delete every single photo and just say, whatever, I don't care. I don't need any of this. Also, my eye strain is real, <laughs> but it's done. And I'm really finding that I'm thinking twice before taking photos and like, do I need this or is it something for fun? I think we're going to see this even more with my phone of like, okay, I took a photo and then I sent it to someone deleted immediately because you don't need to keep it. I'm also hoping that this will make me better about the day I get back or the day after I get back moving photos into relevant folders and just getting them organized right away instead of having months worth of stuff on a memory card and then saying, ugh, I don't have time to organize 2000 photos right now. Just go here, do it in little bits and pieces and then it doesn't feel so bad. And you don't have to spend an entire work week effectively <laughs> looking through all of your photos. All told, I deleted at least 5,000 photos from all of the various spaces. And I cleared up at least 50 gigabytes of space. So that was photo and video. Just, pfft. it was probably more than that. I didn't really keep track from the beginning, but it was a lot. The bottom line though is it's now all organized into folders and I can find things and I am no longer almost out of space on every device that I own. My nearly full, very old external hard drive is now only 25% full, which is good because it's like 15 years old and I'm surprised it still works in the first place. I'm hoping too that once I organize Google Drive and OneDrive, those will require less space and they will not constantly be sending me your account is out of space emails. And maybe I will not have to pay them the two to five dollars a month for extra storage space because I can just have the default amount of space that you get with the free account. It's helping that I have a lot of things on Plex and that I have Backblaze because I know that if I ever say, oh, actually, I really do need this. I can get it. And if there are things that I'm like, what if I don't keep a full hard copy of this? Like, I'm not going to be 
too pressed if I lose this and I don't need it all the time. So what if I just leave that folder on Backblaze but don't actually have a copy of it locally and then if in five years something weird happens and I'm like, oh, I do need that file, I can still get it. I'm not sure yet, but for right now, I feel like I've gotten myself down to a manageable level of storage and don't need to do that. I do need to find somewhere to put all of those files that are on that external hard drive because it's old and it's gonna fail someday. What's even better though is that when I needed to replace the hard drive that I broke for my videos, I was able to save some money and buy a drive with the same amount of storage that I had on the one that I broke and not spend an extra $60 to size up because I hopefully won't need that drive to be my catch-all backup when my other stuff is full and I panic and I'm like, ugh, put this somewhere. It's not taking up my whole hard drive and my laptop hard drive or my OneDrive space. So right now, between my new photo and file organization and Backblaze, I feel like I actually have more than enough space for now. Hopefully into the future as I keep myself more organized and stay mindful of what I think needs to be saved to those spaces even more hopefully down the line when I have some time or I revisit this process and I go back through my photos and really delete a bunch of duplicates or files that are pretty much the same thing because I know those exist. They're just in different folders. I will refine this and I will get better at it. And eventually we'll be in a place where I can find things, but I can certainly find things more quickly now than I was able to before I did this. And that's good. Tell me about your experience. What did you do this week? Did you just do computer files? Did you manage to do computer files and cloud storage space? I did the OneDrive documents and basically everything that wasn't photos on OneDrive this week because there's not that much of it and that was pretty straightforward. So that is sorted. I used the same file structure on my cloud space that I used on my computers and I kept the exact same file structure between my old laptop which honestly just got moved to the external hard drive because I'm trying to get rid of that laptop and the only reason I'm keeping it is because I need to run the DVD burner off of it to copy my stuff for Plex. So after I organized all of my files I moved those onto the old external hard drive which backs up to Backblaze and my laptop does not. My old laptop does not. It was so much easier to do when I had a consistent file structure that was exactly the same because I could just take the whole My Documents folder and say move to drop it into the hard drive and it just sorted itself into the same folders. I did the same thing for my current laptop so that I can easily transfer files back and forth between the hard drive and the laptop. Same thing with the external hard drive that has my YouTube stuff on it. There's nothing else on there other than projects slash the folder that has my YouTube in it, but it's all the same setup. And I'm going to try to organize my phone the same way. My photos are also all organized into the exact same folder structure across devices. And so it made it a lot easier to consolidate. I moved everything to the external hard drive for now. I think what's going to happen is I'm either going to buy another hard drive just for photos or I will have to pay more for cloud space even if it's just photos because I have way more gigabytes of photo and video files than fit on even the OneDrive space that I'm paying for but I don't want them on that hard drive in case it fails although it is backed up to Backblaze so that's fine. At some point, I'm going to have to get a new hard drive though. That's where I'm at. How did you do? What did you do? What was your experience? Do you have more photos than anyone should ever have ever? Um, and how did you feel about it? I honestly, I'm so non-sentimental that it was a similar idea to the sentimental item stuff where I was just like, what if I delete all of this? I'm a little more forgiving with digital files because they're not taking up physical space. But at the same time, I think that if I 
were in a different mood and had gone through those files a few times, I would have deleted most of them. I probably will if I go back in and redo and revisit, end up deleting more and more and more photos every time. But for now, it was mostly just an organizational adventure. And if I go back in the future, it'll truly be a more of a question of do I need this than where does this go? But you have to start somewhere, right? Yeah, did you get a lot done? Do you feel good? Do you feel super organized? Like you know where all of your digital files were? Or were you really good before this with digital stuff and just were like, oh, I've been organizing my files since the day I got a computer. And why would anybody need to spend multiple weeks of their life doing this? Good for you. I hope you're that person. I want to be that person. I'm just lazy. <laughs> don't have time and patience for it. And it's so funny because it's so much the opposite of my physical space where I'm like, if you take time and put it away now, you won't have to spend five hours cleaning whatever later. But when it comes to things on my laptop, I'm like, whatever, it's there, it's fine. I don't know. I guess you can't be organized about everything or something. There's probably some profound saying there that I don't know anything about. Let me know how you did. Let me know how you're feeling. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And if not, I guess thumbs down, that's cool, whatever. And if you want to keep up and follow along, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.